My name is Rich Pagano. I'm a drummer, a singer, music producer. I have a whole bunch of new music of my own coming out this year, 2020. Um, but I'm mainly a drummer who has a passion for realizing drum sounds. And I've spent years talking to iconic engineers like Jeff Emmerich, The Beatles, Eddie Kramer, Led Zeppelin, Elliot Shiner, Steely Dan, and, and many, many more. Um, just asking questions on how they recorded some of those classic records that they engineered or produced. Plus, for the last five years, I was an adjunct teacher here at NYU's Clive Davis Institute of Recording in New York City, teaching the art of recording classic drums, a class that I created. In this video, I'll explain how I realized the drum session in the COVID era. I did it all by myself, within ears, just uh, going back and forth and checking things out and finding the sweet spots. More on that later. Guitarist band leader Jimmy Vivino and I were asked to create a rhythm track that would eventually feature guests. Of course, all sessions were done separately with Jimmy sending his guitar track to a click track. And he and I talked about style and direction for this blues-based song. And I went to work. And here is what I came up with. By the way, in the end of the video, I will showcase the final results. So starting with the kick drum, the kick is tuned nice and low, resonator head a bit lower than the batter head. I wanted some points, so I used two mics and I put an Audix vocal mic in the drum itself just laying it on top of the baffle, angling it perfectly by using in-ears. Reminder that I did this during COVID by myself, so in-ears were essential. Um, mine are a molded triple driver type, but a good pair of tight headphones will do. I used a Bayer M88, as you can see, not in the hole, just on the outside to the left, angling in a bit. I'm not a big fan of the microphone being stuffed into the hole of uh, a bass drum cutout. I like getting a little bit of that outer head and what it brings to the sonic table. The snare drum, I have 57 on top, angled perfectly by using in-ears and finding the sweet spot right over the hoop, as you can see, and there was a bottom mic there too, just a simple dynamic mic. I have uh, Beta 98s, perfectly angled. I found the sweet spots on the rack tom and the floor. Not my theory, someone else wrote about it, that you um, find that puff of air at the rim when you hit the drum and that's where your microphone should go. That's where it's all coming together. Are you a phase freak like I am? Well, you should be. Understanding phase is very important to a giant or really pleasant sounding drum sound. I spend a lot of time on that with my students. A couple of NT1s for the Glenn Johns method, place fairly evenly behind the floor tom, and then about uh, forehead height in front of the kit over the rack tom. I stood in front of the kit, I hit the drums, and with my in-ears in, I brought that microphone up and down until I found the perfect phase and the perfect sweet spot. Here's an overview of everything. I didn't go with room mics on this one, didn't need them. So here is a gate on my kick drum master and EQ, high mid bump. I added the guitars at this point. I felt it needed a bit more high mid to compete with his sound. Adding the snare drum track now, close mics, up and bottom, master there. We have um, not much ratio on the compression, just uh, one to one. A slow attack so the transients come through and a uh, fairly quick release on that. I'll take a second to talk about the sound I was going for, which was rootsy in a Levon Helm fashion but adding a bit of a British blues beefiness in the toms and the fatness of the snare drum. Adding my overhead and behind the floor tom mic. I'm such a big fan of those NT1s. They're inexpensive and they're really wide. No need to spend a lot of money on mics. EQ, not much. Um, overall compression, very little. Slow attack, medium release, and a little limiting just to um, make everything somewhat even without killing the transients, just kissing it. I have a summing mixer that I put everything through. Not necessary, but it certainly does a nice thing to the low end. I mixed to a different computer, a different source, and used my Audion A to D converter to bring it to that place. And here we are with the final verdict. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions and comments, and I hope to see you at one of my classes or in a Zoom-like tutorial. Thanks for watching.